This video is going to look at transparency in WebGL. For such a basic behavior, it may be a bit surprising how complicated transparency can sometimes be. Uh, most times it's easy, maybe even trivially easy. Other times, not so much. I don't feel remotely qualified to talk about these more advanced problems, but I think I can give you a pretty solid foundation to get you going for the most common use cases, and maybe give you a clear understanding of why something is legitimately difficult. Now, if you're here for a quick answer, if you're just trying to figure out why your program isn't rendering transparencies right and you want me to stop flapping my mouth hole, well, here's maybe all you really need to do. And if that doesn't work, try this. Still here? Okay. So if you saw those, hopefully you noticed two things. First, depth testing is a feature you can enable and disable in WebGL, and so is a depth mask, whatever that is. And second, transparency is related to depth somehow. Okay, let's start unpacking this by seeing some simple demonstrations. Three triangles, just drawn straight to the canvas without cameras or perspectives or matrix transforms or whatever. If you study the vertices, you'll see that each triangle lies at its own depth. Red has the greatest depth value of 0.5, and it appears farthest away from us, at the back. Green is in the middle, at 0, and blue has the smallest depth value at negative 0.5, so it's closest to us, at the front. So from back to front, it's RGB, red, then green, and then blue. And what we see right now seems to be obeying our three-dimensional vertex positions. But is it really? Let's try changing the order of our draw calls. Yeah, the stacking order changes. That means it's ignoring our vertex depth values. And at least the way that I've written things here so far, this is correct behavior, because of how WebGL is set up by default. And even if you add cameras or viewports or perspective matrices or whatever, this will still happen. So as it is right now, that depth value is kind of meaningless, because things we draw earlier will always get covered up by things that we draw later, no matter what depth value they have, by default. Okay, are we sure about this? Because maybe that's just a side effect of doing multiple draw calls. Well, let's find out. Nope. Red, blue, green. That's the order of the triangles in our vertex buffer, but not the order by their depth. If this is not what you expected out of a 3D rendering API, you're probably not alone. But no, WebGL defaults are sometimes a bit difficult to justify. In this case, probably because it involves adding and managing a depth buffer, depth testing slows things down ever so slightly, so it's disabled by default. And even if you keep it disabled, this isn't always a huge problem. Sometimes it's pretty easy to control draw call order and draw things in the order of their depth. But in this case, it is a problem, so we want it enabled. Now we get our triangles drawn in the correct order, and the order we issue our draw calls doesn't matter anymore. Okay, so that's our first rule. If we have overlapping geometry and depth is important, then depth testing should be enabled. So now, because depth is important to us, let's keep depth testing on, but let's, uh, let's drop the opacity of our back red triangle. Can't really tell. It, it looks right. Let's change the background color. Uh, yeah, no, no, that's, that's not right at all. The color should include some of the background color, right? So what's missing now is blending. To get blending working, you need to do two things. First, you need to enable blending. And second, you need to tell WebGL how you want to blend, using the blend func function. By default, WebGL's blend function is basically the same as if blending were disabled, which I, I know seems pretty dumb. Anywho, in reality, you'll probably just want to use source alpha and one minus source alpha. In real life, this is pretty much an actual default for most WebGL programmers. So now we get something that looks right. Let's change the background color again. Yeah, it looks correct now. And there's our second rule. We need to enable blending and set the blending function. 
Now, here's where things usually start to get confusing. So let's go through this a uh, step at a time. So remember how before we enabled depth testing, triangles were just being rendered in the order they were drawn? So that process, it's, it's still happening. The depth buffer doesn't reorder your primitives. Whatever you're drawing, the, the first thing gets drawn, then the next, then the next, until you're done. What's different now is that WebGL consults the depth buffer before drawing anything new, and it updates the depth buffer after it's finished drawing something new. The depth buffer's job is to tell WebGL, hey, according to what you've told me so far, you've already drawn something here and it's in front of your current fragment, so skip that and move to the next one. Or you've already drawn something here, but it's behind your current fragment, so you can overwrite that. Basically, the depth buffer is there to tell WebGL when it can and can't paint to the canvas. And here's what our depth buffer actually looks like. The depth buffer isn't a 3D representation, it's a flat image map, and every point on it represents the depth of whatever's been drawn at that point until now. White means as far back as you can possibly go. Black means as far forward as you can possibly go. Gray means it's somewhere in between, and darker gray means it's in front of anything that's lighter gray. It's pretty simple. So clearly, before we start drawing, the depth buffer is empty, so it's white. After our first triangle, this is what our color buffer and depth buffer look like. If we draw a second triangle, what will happen? Well, for each fragment, WebGL will consult the depth buffer. If nothing's there, WebGL will know it's free to write that fragment to the color buffer and update the depth buffer with that fragment's depth information. If something is there already, but it's behind the newer fragment, the depth buffer will show that too. So the new fragment will overwrite that spot on the color buffer, and the depth buffer will be updated with that new depth information. But if the newer fragment is behind what's there already? Well, the depth buffer will show that too, and when that happens, WebGL will simply discard the fragment and move on to the next one. Nothing will be drawn to the color buffer, and the depth buffer will not be updated. For opaque fragments, this is really perfect behavior, because it's how we can draw things in any arbitrary order. Unfortunately, when transparency is involved, we run into two problems. The first problem is that this may cause us to blend fragments prematurely. The second problem is that we may be updating the depth buffer when we really shouldn't be. Problem number one is this. If a fragment is supposed to be transparent, it has to know the color of whatever's behind it. If it's drawn first, how can it possibly know what color it should end up showing? What, what colors should it be blending? You can continue to draw opaque triangles in any order that you want. WebGL's got that covered really well, but transparent fragments have to be drawn last. Well, obviously not last, not all at once last. Really, each transparent fragment has to be drawn after everything behind it is already there. Or, to put this another way, transparent fragments have to be drawn back to front. Draw the transparent bits furthest back first, and then keep drawing the next nearest, and the next nearest, and the next nearest, until you've drawn the last one, closest to the viewer. That way, if WebGL is trying to draw a transparent fragment, it will always have the color information it needs to blend the colors completely. Make sense? This brings us our third and fourth rules. Draw opaque things first in any order, then draw transparent ones. And, if transparent things can overlap other transparent things, draw from back to front. This basically solves problem number one. If opaque things occlude transparent things that show up later in the draw call, they, they don't get drawn, so that's, that's good. And when transparent things show up, WebGL's guaranteed to have all the color information it needs to blend the colors correctly. And problem number two is almost completely avoided because at this point the depth buffer doesn't matter for transparency anymore. Draw order is set before it even gets to WebGL. Ah, but there's one last problem that we have to consider. What if two transparent triangles lie at exactly the same depth? This, this is actually a common problem in 2D games, where sprites of the same type are often all written at the same depth. Well, is this even a problem? Let's take a look and find out.
Yes, so there's no way for those two triangles to coexist. Whichever one is drawn first, it updates the depth buffer. And where they overlap, that will stop the second one from ever getting drawn. In my experience, this is one of the most confusing visual bugs you'll usually come across. And there are three ways to address this. The first is obviously to always keep a minimum distance between coplanar objects. That is, don't let any triangle occupy the same depth in the same location. This is actually good practice because it also avoids something called Z or Z fighting, which I won't go into here. The second way to address this is you can make the depth buffer read-only before you start writing your transparent objects. You're, you're not disabling the depth buffer, you're just stopping transparent objects from updating it. You do this with the function depth mask. It's true by default, which for once makes sense. Just remember to re-enable it when you're done. It will be completely obvious if you forget to re-enable it, which is why I prefer this method. The third way is to change how the depth test works. By default, WebGL will draw to the color buffer only when the depth of the new fragment is less than what's currently there. Change that to less than or equal, and the second triangle will get rendered correctly again. If you're drawing using multiple passes, you're probably going to be doing this anyway. With the last two methods, no matter which way you go, as you can see, there's a difference between blue after green and green after blue. So this won't always solve transparency bugs. So keeping things at different depths is sometimes the best solution. So that's it. That's what I think is the easiest way to explain WebGL transparency and transparency issues. Let's review the rules. If we have overlapping geometry and object depth is important, then depth testing should be enabled. If something has transparency, enable blending and set a blending function. Draw opaque things first in any order, then transparent things. If transparent things ever overlap, draw them back to front. And if overlapping transparent things must be coplanar, either disable writing to the depth buffer or change the depth function. Will this solve every issue? Unfortunately, Absolutely not. Not even close. Consider an object that has both transparent and opaque texture elements. Consider a group of triangles arranged like this, or this. And consider just two triangles that intersect. There's a lot more to learn here, but I think this should keep you happy and productive, hopefully for a good long while.